don't let this quiet scene in the town of Brook in Vaterland fool you. This picturesque village is on the front line of a water war the Dutch have been waging for a thousand years. Our cover story is reported by Martha Teichner. These windmills were built nearly 300 years ago to pump water out of the surrounding farmland. But the Dutch have been at it for far, far longer, outsmarting the water that's everywhere around them. It is a matter of survival. 26% of the country is below sea level. This massive storm surge barrier was completed in 1997. It protects Rotterdam, Europe's largest port. They're as big as an Eiffel Tower in Paris, but then on its side. The man describing this colossus is Henk Ovink. I'm water envoy for the Kingdom of the Netherlands, which means water ambassador. The Dutch are the world's go-to water management experts. Ovink spent two years in the United States working in areas hit by Superstorm Sandy. I said, could you think about preventing the disaster? And he was like, preventing the disaster? No, we couldn't. No, we have to make sure that we respond faster. And I said, but suppose that there is no disaster because you prepared better. Who doesn't know the fable about the little Dutch boy who plugged the hole in a dike with his finger and saved his country? What really happened taught the Netherlands about preparedness. A ferocious North Sea storm in January 1953 flooded 500 square miles and killed more than 1,800 people. The Dutch built themselves a fortress of flood protection. Today, the Netherlands considers itself protected against a 10,000-year storm, in part thanks to research done by Deltaris, a gee whiz kind of place with the largest wave machine in the world. This is an experiment uh, facility where we can test coastal structures, so structures that protect the coast from waves. Op van Dongeren is a coastal flooding expert with Del Taurus, which has worked with clients in 140 different countries. In Northern California is a big project for us. Including the United States. In all of the designs that you're doing, are you assuming sea level rise? Yes, we are. And that will come with higher waves, so you have to figure that all into your design. Sea levels here are expected to rise more than three feet by the end of the century. This projection prompted the Dutch government, so used to walling water out at all costs, to rethink and let the water in instead. And for the Dutch, this is a revolution. The idea that you're safer by lowering the dikes, this is extraordinary. In her latest book, journalist Tracy Metz, a longtime Netherlands resident, tells the story of how the farmers of Overdeep's Upholder voluntarily agreed to give up their land so that it could become a spillway for a nearby river when it floods in order to protect cities and towns downstream. The old farm stood there. There. Yes. Yeah. And the river is there. For Noel Huyemeyers, it was a sacrifice with a silver lining. Huge mounds were constructed so that he and a few of his neighbors were able to build brand new farms high above the floodplain. So you're happy, not angry. Everybody here is happy, yeah? Learning to accommodate water has led to innovation. For example, a 24 million ton pile of sand dumped off Holland's south coast, called the sand engine. Nature was the engine that spread it into a flood barrier and a beach. Is the Dutch model applicable? Oh, I think at parts of the Dutch model are. Jim Murley is the man in charge of confronting Miami-Dade County's water issues and has consulted Dutch engineers. Just the way they go about thinking about managing water, uh, how they use their land, creates a mindset. In South Florida, flooding has become a regular occurrence, 
According to current estimates, sea levels here will rise as much as six feet by the end of the century. At stake, trillions of dollars of real estate and more than seven million lives. We want to be sure that this facility will, will withstand a storm surge. At a vulnerable Miami area wastewater treatment plant, critical infrastructure is being rebuilt higher. In Miami Beach, streets are being raised two and a half feet. A new art museum in downtown Miami is designed so flood water can flush through its foundation. We're starting to think about how we might develop in the future if we are having to live with water like the Dutch are. Like Rotterdam, where there's a floating conference center surrounded by floating trees. And Amsterdam, with its whole neighborhood of floating houses. <laughs> Jasper Dijkshoren and his wife Sietzke Jacobs bought theirs five months ago. It's weird having the water right out the window. Yeah, it is, it is, but on, on the other end, it isn't. You're in a house. She doesn't mind that the baby's crib is underwater. The house is moored to a dock. So what happens if water level rises? Does the house just Yeah, yeah the house goes up? up. Yeah, yeah. To him, as a Dutchman, the water is a fact of life. And you like living with water all around you? Yeah. Yeah, and it's calm. It's very peaceful. It's in our, in our veins. 